Traders, I'm green for the day and I'm done trading for the day. As you can see, I'm up almost $2,000. So a very small green day, but uh, you can see that I had two winners and two losers, just that I guess I managed my winners a little bit better than I did my losers. Anyway, uh, a small green day, nothing to write home about. The only thing I want to talk about is uh, DPZ. There was a mistake done with DPZ, although you can see it's my uh, biggest winner actually $7,700 but um, technically speaking there was nothing wrong about that. DPZ started with a big gap down I believe it was 8% or so and then tried to move higher which is just perfect for a gap and go. You wait until it fails to move higher and it did fail and I did post it for a short under 406 which is the point which I usually believe is the point of no return. You know, once it moves to the height and then comes back down, you look for the point of no return, uh, which is the point where you believe that it's very likely to continue down. Now, it did continue down fantastically well, but at the point of clicking the button, I did not notice the spread. The spread was huge. I shouldn't have taken this trade, definitely not with the size I took. Um, it just happened very quickly. You see, it's the second one minute candle here. I was really writing the trade in the room while it triggered and I chased it down another 50 cents, which is okay because it's a big mover, but did not notice the spread. Well, it did work out. Some of you said it was lucky. I don't think it was luck. It was the right technical formation. It was a clear gap and go, just that my quantity should have been lower. Anyway, the end result, I'm nicely green and can't argue with the end result. But you know what? That's not the thing I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about my last 100 shares in DPZ because there was a partial here and I reduced some more size, but I left 100 shares and DPZ, as you can see, moved over the highs. Question is, why did I let it move up that much? Well, tell you what, I had a $7,000 winner in this trade and a stock that is down 8% is not really likely to move over the highs and then continue higher. So why do these big moves happen? They do happen ever so often. I mean, it's just because, well, you know, there's always a big move when there's more buyers than sellers. But when people see a well-known company like DPZ uh, moving down that much, they like to buy it and they're usually getting excited and while they get excited they keep buying and look at the volume it's growing and but there's it, it, there's there's nothing to it usually because usually when a stock that is down eight percent is trying to move higher it's not likely to continue much so technically speaking you should be waiting for a reversal and then have your stop so when the stock is making that big move just wait for the reversal. It doesn't matter where it is. Once you have a clear reversal, and that was probably this red candle somewhere over here, you know now you have your stop and you can take it down. The difference between this stop and that stop where I had here, of course, it's coming down, but once it started going sideways, I moved out. That was approximately seven or eight points. I'm not sure. So that's a seven or eight hundred dollars difference, which I'm glad I played it the way I did. I'm glad I waited for the pullback. And uh, that was the right thing to do. Technically speaking, that was the right thing to do. And you know, sometimes these small details are extremely important. They're very, very important. Now, just last thing I want to talk about is uh, CYTK. It was going sideways. At one point, I thought maybe I should take it for short here under 50, 60. It came down like 30 cents or so. That was not enough for a partial, in my opinion. The risk was 40 cents. Target should have been 40 cents. And when a stock is just going sideways, as long as it is, don't trust it to make a big move. Why does a stock go sideways for so long? The reason the stock was going sideways for such a long time is because it has the same number of buyers as it has sellers. So it, it reached the point where it's balanced. So when it's pushed down a little bit more, that doesn't mean that all the buyers are going to get upset and start selling. I mean, the stock is down 40 something percent. It has found its support. If the if if it would have made this move down, then pulled down, and then some point at some point over here would have continued the trend 
and then came down, that would have been a valid trade. That was not a valid trade because it continued to go sideways for a long, long time. So, you know, noise wise, it could come down as, as some kind of a noise. I mean, more sellers at one point, that's it. Now it's coming back up again. That's not a stock you want to take. The, it, it's, it's a long basing here and it's not likely for it to break down strong. That's why I canceled the trade. I mean, I did post it for a short somewhere over here, but then decided I'm not going to take it because it went sideways for just too long. Well, that's it for me. Again, a very small green day. Nothing uh, uh, to talk about too much, but you know, some small examples are interesting every once in a while and we had some. So, I uh, wish you a great trading session and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye traders. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Tradenet's free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no risk, no cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.